Hey everyone, Clay from Clayviation.com. If you're anything like me, you know, I love to read a flight manual or an instruction manual or a technical manual to get the most out of it, but there are just some things that have to be shown visually, and learning the GPS system is one of those. So today we're here talking about the Garmin 430 GPS, which is a very popular uh, GPS unit that you're going to see in a lot of different training airplanes, certainly here in the flight simulator. Um, this one in the flight simulator is very similar to the ones that you'll find in the real airplane, so you'll find that some of these concepts translate, um, but the biggest thing is making the most out of this unit, and it takes a little while playing around with it, but that's why instead of trying to learn every little nook and cranny of it right off the bat, let's just talk about five or six very important things that you need to know that'll really help you out with flying a simulator. So um, first and foremost, you can zoom in to this uh, system here with the 3D panel, um, and you'll notice here it's got these two knobs on it and you've got kind of an outer larger knob and an inner smaller knob and you've got that both on the left and right hand side it's a little hard to grab those knobs when you're with your mouse and find exactly the right region to make those knobs move so a really cool thing you can do is actually to come and click the actual screen and it's going to pull this unit up in a separate window which really helps it kind of makes it a little bigger you can kind of keep that up as you're changing different views um, you know no matter what you're doing you're going to have that up. So you can choose to close back out of it if you need to, but it's really handy just to have that up when you need it. So you can see here, these kind of these wheels look like gears, but that's actually your outer and your inner knob. So let's go through a few things. The first thing we're probably going to want to know to do is to simply tune in frequencies, the very basic use for this unit, which um, in this case, you've got this unit functioning as your COM1 and your NAV1 whereas your COM2 and your NAV2 are down here as the next unit in this radio panel. So this is a replacement for your COM and NAV1. So we're flying out right now near Chattanooga. If we look on the map where we are, this is us. Chattanooga's over this way. So let's actually uh, tune in to ATIS, to Chattanooga, and see what we can find there. Um, the ATIS for there is 119.85. Now, your big knob is going to control your big number and your small knob is going to control your small number. Easy way to remember that. So let's get 119.85 uh, plugged in. 119, go to the small one and click that on up to 85. This is your flip-flop key, the C with the arrows. So you flip that into the active Mobile frequency. Information kilo. There is our ATIS. 1500 Zulu weather. Wind calm. Visibility more than 10. Sky clear. Temperature 13, dew point minus 10, altimeter 2992, arriving runways 2033, departing runways 2033, advise Great. initial contact. So you get the idea. So there's our comm. Now, if if we, we're adjusting the standby frequency anytime we actually adjust these numbers, just like in our regular radio stack in the airplane, you never actually directly input into the to the active. You're always tuning in your standby and flip-flopping that into the active. So if we want to adjust now our nav um, frequencies, we can actually go over and if you push this CV button, actually push the knob, that's what's going to move us down to the nav one standby frequency. Um, the Choo Choo Vortac is 115.8. That's over near Chattanooga. So let's go ahead and change this to... 115.8 and flip that into the active. Now you can see our CDI needle just moved over here. You need to make sure you've got nav selected to pull that na uh, nav frequency instead of any GPS data. That just toggles between nav and, G and what you've got in your GPS. So nav is how you make sure that nav is active. And at this point we could go through and adjust our um, our VOR. Check out my other video on VOR navigation if you'd like to know a little bit more about that. But you can see that we are, if we were to turn to 060 degrees right now and head towards this Vortac, we would uh, we would head there. So that's where we are right now. Okay, so that's tuning frequencies. The next thing that's kind of neat is, how about seeing a map of this area? Now, let me show you one quick layout here. If you go over now to our right-hand knob, the big knob is going to take us in between different page groups. So you've got these small little boxes that just represent the different pages within each group. So right now we're on the nav page group. 
And if we move the big knob over one, we're now on the Waypoint page group. And you can see there's six, looks like, different pages within Waypoint. And then you can click the big knob over again and move over to the nearest page group. And now you've got five pages within that. So in this version on the X-Plane, you've got these three different page groups you can kind of flip between. And within each one, you can actually navigate between the pages by just using the small knob. So if you click the small knob here in the nav page group, you can see it now goes to the second page and then over to the third page. So the second page of your nav page group is your map screen. Now let me show you an easy way to remember how to get to this anytime, a little trick. If you press and hold this clear key, it's going to take you back to what's called the default nav screen, which this is your basic uh, nav screen that's really easy to use once we get some stuff plugged in. From, excuse me, from there, that's your first page on the nav. So if you just press and hold clear, you get to nav. If you just small click over one here, you're going to get to your map. Within your map, you can adjust your range. You know, think of this as kind of zooming out, like going higher in the air or getting lower to the ground. So you can actually zoom out. You can see, okay, well, I've got Chattanooga off to my left here. You can actually also um, declutter. If you click the clear key, it's going to go through various phases um, of decluttering the different information that's shown on the map. So that's number two, viewing a map of the area. We can tune frequencies, and we've got a map of the area. Third is navigating to an airport. So what if we said, okay, well, now let's go fly to Chattanooga. How do we actually do that? So the best way to do that is click this direct to key right here, the D with the arrow, and it's going to pull open this select waypoint screen. If we just start turning this right knob here, it's going to start going through the different letters, the small knob here. So obviously we're going to start with K, KCHA, uh, Kilo Charlie, Hotel Alpha is uh, Chattanooga. So we uh, select our K or L or whatever we start off with, of course in this case it's K, with the small inner knob. That's how we adjust the actual letters here. And the outer knob is how we move to the next space. So let's go over to C, big knob to move over, find our way up to H, and it's already auto-completed the most logical one for us here. So we could, we could scroll over one more to the A, or we could just go ahead and hit Enter, and it's going to uh, ask us, do we want to activate this? And we can hit Enter again. And now we are activated. So our desired track is here in the center. We're actually heading, if you look at our heading indicator, 122, and it's saying we should be flying 052. So let's go ahead and I'm on uh, autopilot right now, but let's go ahead and adjust our heading bug over to 052 and get ourselves established towards Chattanooga here. Now, this line is showing how far on or off course we are. Um, so uh, obviously, we want to have that right in the center uh, to be navigating directly to it. We can also now move over to what we've already learned from our nav screen here and go right over to our map and see, in fact, Chattanooga is right there ahead of us. We can adjust our range down. And now we are, as they say, flying the magenta line. You can see that because we've made the turn, we're actually a little bit to the right of course, it looks like. If we go back over, we can either uh, knob over to get back to our default nav here from the map, or again, press clear twice from anywhere, and it's going to take you right back to home here. So you can see course is a little left of us, so we can adjust our course and, of course, uh, get back on that. So that is how we navigate to an airport. That's number three. Uh, the next thing that's helpful to know is how to look up airport information. So once we have a destination entered, just look, um, go to the second page group. So again, our nav page group is our first one. Big knob gets us to our second page group, which is Waypoint. And that's going to get us airport information. So you can actually now use your small knob to get through the different information. Here we are, KCHA, level field, which is Chattanooga. That's what we're going to be looking up, some info on here small knob to move over one. You can see a general diagram of the airport. Now, obviously, you should have a sectional map out looking at it, but especially if you're just tooling around in the X-Plane, this is really handy to see kind of what's nearby. Um, you know, when you've got an airport plugged in, what that is actually going to look like. Um, so we're obviously approaching from the south. I'd imagine we might, if the winds are favorable, be able to run on this runway here. Which, which one is that? Well, that's runway 220. So if you actually push your cursor here, it's going to move the cursor to the runway. 
and then you can now use the little knob to scroll and then the other runway is 15 and 33 and it shows you it gives you your 5570 feet long runway by 150 feet wide it's a hard surface so some good information there um, push cursor again to get off of that and you can scroll through and learn some more information about it which will be our next uh, topic which is finding the nearest airport so let's say that we're out here flying along and maybe we're a little bit unsituationally aware of where we are and we want to find out, uh, let's just press clear and get back to our home here. We want to find out what the nearest airport to us is. We've got to get it on the ground. Maybe we realize that we don't quite have the fuel that we need to get to Chattanooga. So let's get this thing on the ground and grab a Coke and get some gas. So how do we do that? Well, we're on our nav page group. Let's go over to our waypoint page group. Uh, and one more over to the nearest page group. And the very first thing that pops up here is our nearest airport. So it shows here that AL09 is actually our nearest airport. It's 9.9 .9 miles away. Um, and then it kind of gives you the length of the longest runway here. So you can kind of see. So for instance, 7GA5, uh, it's got a really short runway there. So that might not be exactly the runway we'd want to use. But hey, 4A9 here has got a really nice 5,000 foot runway. Now that's kind of gone away. So. Um, to get to uh, select one of these airports, just press the cursor key here, and then at that point you can kind of uh, select through with your small knob to get to the various ones. So we might decide, you know, hey, let's go to that 4A9, or let's see if we can find something with uh, that we know we have some services. So there's obviously a lot of very small KAPT. That's a cool little airport, very scenic right off the highway. If you ever drive from, say, Atlanta to Chattanooga. Um, that's you can't actually see it from the highway that I know of but some really pretty lake area so if we wanted to navigate there we certain, certainly could and the way we would do it is with this highlighted now we would just hit the direct to key and we would hit and ask us if we want to activate it to KAPT Marion County Brownfield and we just hit enter and now we've got this course heading to KAPT if we look at our map here by just pressing that right small knob you can see KAPT is going to be kind of up to our right. So let's hold clear, get back to our default nav screen. You can see the desired track is 010, so we could actually now adjust our course to 010 and pick up that magenta line heading over that way. So that is finding our nearest airport. The last thing we'll cover today is making a flight plan. So let's say now that we wanted to actually head over to KAPT and then over to KCHA where we were initially going. We're gonna go, go grab a Coke and some gas in KAPT. Maybe the gas is a little cheaper there. And then we're gonna head back over to Chattanooga and land and have some fun in the city tonight. So here's how we're gonna do that. We're gonna first of all click our flight plan key, which is down here. FPL stands for flight plan. Now we've already got KAPT actually in our flight plan. Um, since we had that selected and we were navigating to it. We can use our large knob here. Sorry, push push our cursor. And we can use our large knob uh, to move down to the various uh, lines. So if we wanted to go to the next one here, past KAPT, we would just use the large knob to get there. Small knob now is going to open up this, this page. Just by turning that small knob is what I did. And now it pulls it up and it's automatically saying, hey, you're probably going to a K airport um, since most of them start with that. So let's go to Chattanooga, KCHA. And there you are, Chattanooga. So again, enter. And then again, enter to accept it. Popped up down there. And now we've got Chattanooga. We could add now as many of these as we wanted in our flight plan. We could add airports, we could add waypoints, GPS waypoints, whatever we want to do. So, um, Now, if we want to, say, remove a, a waypoint, let's say we wanted to kind of get rid of this APT, we decided, hey, you know what, guys, let's get on to Chattanooga, let's call for an Uber, and let's get on with our night. Who cares about the cheaper gas prices? So now let's remove KAPT out of here. We can actually just navigate back up to KAPT, hit clear, and remove waypoint, yes or no. That's how we do that. And there we have it.
straight back to Chattanooga. And to get to Chattanooga, again, hit hold clear. It's going to take us back to this, our desired track 051. Now it's showing we're pretty well off course. We're going to get into a little more about navigation in another um, episode. But for now, this is should get you started well on your way to using the GPS. I would highly encourage you get up in the air, um, set the autopilot um, like I have it. You can get the autopilot going so that you don't have to really worry about constantly trimming the airplane. And you can really just kind of focus on these radios and um, play around with this a little bit. Get familiar with it and try some out try out these scenarios that I've taught you today. Hope you've enjoyed. Like this video if it helps you out at all. Subscribe to the Claviation channel. Make sure you get updates every time a new video comes out. Have a great time. See you again.